please welcome to the stage, Ophira Eisenberg! <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, and some of you have masks on. That's great. I, have, I think that's, I, I love it. I have no problem with it at all. I will say that I played a couple shows right in April where everybody was masked, which was totally fine, but it's really hard for feedback <laughs> because cause the eyes say disappointment, <laughs> right? But then you hear laughter and your brain can't put it together. You're like, failure, joy, failure, joy. <laughs> and there's nothing to compare it to for me, having people stare at me with masks on, like, you know. What, what is that like? Oh, like waking up during surgery. I don't know. <laughs> at a teaching hospital. And so, and I'm also, I know it's kind of a weird time, so I'm really happy. I'm really happy you are all here. Um, yes, I know. <laughs> but in theory, as we're all here, you know, New York is back! <laughs> That's what we say now. That is what we say. That is the official slogan. Remember when the slogan used to be only in New York? <laughs> Remember when that was the slogan? Right, that you would see something heinous and then you would go, only in New York, right? <laughs> Even tourists would be like, I saw a stray cat eating a pigeon, eating a rat. <laughs> it was a vermin turducken. <laughs> so everyone has their moment that lives here where they're like, this is when I knew New York was back. Uh, and I'll tell you mine. I took the subway to Times Square, got out of the subway, and this guy just looked at me and went, cocaine? Like, New York is back! Yeah! <laughs> and by that I mean back in the 80s. <laughs> what? I don't remember that. Uh, but I bought it because. <laughs> right? You gotta support small businesses. <laughs> they say, thank you. Yeah, shop small, shop local. That's what we're told. I had a coffee also before I came here. And every coffee place requires that you give your name. My name is Ophira. Clearly, I do not put that in the hands of a barista <laughs> to toy with. Uh, because it's just every, every single time I say my name in any context like that, it's always like, and, and the name is Ophira, and they go, oh my god, I've never heard that before. What kind of name is that? <laughs> and I'll, I'll tell you, so Ophira is, uh, it's a real name. <laughs> First. Uh, it's a old name. It's a old, old, old Hebrew name that uh, didn't catch on. <laughs> so. And it's very, it's very Israeli. And I have an Israeli friend. And I said, "Well, it's popular there, right? Right? There, you know, Ophira's in Israel." And he goes, "No, no, no." <laughs> Old name, nobody wants it. Right. Yeah, I'm the Mabel of Jerusalem, everybody. Just call me Tel Aviv Eunice. So I, I, I have a coffee name. And if anyone ha here has a uh, weird name, I want to hear it. Because I, yeah, you, if you have a weird name, you get into the vibe. You go into a Starbucks or whatever, and you use your coffee name. You use your caffeine alter ego. You have your Java pseudonym that you use to get your caffeine with as little issue as possible. Okay, who, who has one? You have one? Okay, what's your real name? Alion. Alion. Yeah, that's way too hard. Yeah, that's got <laughs> syllables, and it sounds like too many other things. All right. Okay, so what's your coffee name? Ellie. Ellie. So cute. Nice, so cute. <laughs> so cute. I love that you're like, and I am very cute as an Ellie. I'm extremely cute as an Ellie. And is that an L-L-Y, Ellie? Actually, why, you don't care. It's not your real name. Who cares how you spell it? Yeah, yes, who cares? Okay, my real name's Sophia, and my coffee name is Joan. Joan. <laughs> That's a good one, right? Joan. 
Uh, and it goes great. It goes over great. Uh, however, there was a misstep because I went into a uh, Starbucks. I went into a Starbucks and I was like, hey, can I get a medium coffee? And the name is Joan. And then I just waited. And the barista goes, ah, that's my name too. And I was like, oh, 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 no, I've never planned for this moment. And she goes, do you also hate the nickname Joni? And I was like, I I I've never created a backstory for my character. All I had to say was yes. Do you hate the nickname Joni? Yes, move it on. But instead I just went, oh, it's actually not my real name. It's, it's not my real name. And she goes, what? She looks sort of angry and confused. And I went, no, 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 I like that name. I like that name because it's simple. Yeah. Okay, let's agree. That's not an insult. That is not an insult. Sort of sounds like one, but it's not a real insult but she took it as one. Uh, and she goes, well, what's your real name? And I go, Ophira. And she's like, what? I go, Ophira. And she goes, that's a stupid name. <laughs> and then she took the coffee cup and the Sharpie and she wrote Joni on it. And that's how I got my coffee. Mm -hmm. Yep. I was served in more than one way at that Starbucks. And you know what? I am fine their employees and their coffee bitter. I would just like to say. I'm single. I'm sorry, I'm married with a child. Um, <laughs> there's only two types of female comics, you know? And you gotta pick which one you are. You gotta pick which one you are, and I forget sometimes. Yes, I am married with a child. I have a, uh, I have a five-year-old son. And yeah, thanks. I know it's uh, so weird being here knowing he's at home alone, but I... <laughs> you want to do the show, you know? You want to do the show. Uh, and I had, him, I had him later in life. Uh, when I was pregnant, I was considered both high risk and an inspiration. <laughs> and... <laughs> And I can't believe I had this kid biologically, uh, but we're raising him adopted because... <laughs> I want him to feel chosen, you know? I want him to feel chosen. Uh, when, you, when you do things that are kind of off the uh, mainstream idea of what a woman should do with her time on this planet, you get judged, you get asked a lot of questions, rude questions. I have been asked more than once, why did you wait so long? It's because I hate kids. <laughs> yeah. But they say you love your own. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> No, 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 he's a good kid. I call him, I call him my good egg, because uh, I know for a fact he was my last good egg. <laughs> and... <laughs> uh, I remember when I was pregnant, women would just come up to me and go, ah, in vitro? And I'd be like, no, in dicko. Um... <laughs> Also FDA approved, also FDA approved. <laughs> and then uh, t twice this happened, men that I did not know came up to me and I think they wanted to be involved in my journey, <laughs> you know? And they would just go, I think it's wonderful. I'm just curious, how long were you trying? <laughs> I know, and I was so shocked, I answered. I was like, I think it was five or six minutes. Um, <laughs> I remember Game of Thrones was on pause. <laughs> you know, and then this year happened. Uh, and I'll tell you this, nobody told me as a mother that I would have to raise my own child. <laughs> okay, that is, what? 
unfair. Looking back before this, I, I often think, was I parenting before? <laughs> Between like school and activities and a grandparent and a babysitter, I think I used to weigh in like 12% of the time. And I want the team back, people. I want the team back. Uh, so I was, I was thinking about this last while. I was just like, is there anything positive? Can I think of anything positive? Because I'm a little burnt out on the news, of course, and I'm also burnt out on just the lifestyle think pieces that come through my feed, because they are also all Bummers, all of them. The headlines are like, has Zoom changed your brain chemistry permanently? You know, just like, oh my God. <laughs> your relationship survived the pandemic, but will it survive the summer? Experts say no. <laughs> 10 things you love that are gone. <laughs> you know, just. I want, I, I just want some positive stuff. I want some positive articles in my feed. I don't even care if they're false. Like, fine, <laughs> clickbait away. You know, I want like, study shows, alternated coffee and wine is great for your brain chemistry. <laughs> I know, yeah. Crying, good for your skin. <laughs> Sobbing, takes off seven years. <laughs> 10 unmotivated people who became billionaires. <laughs> There's hope. So, okay, so I'm thinking over last year, and I did think of something that was positive. I thought of something. Okay, so if you have a little kid, you get colds all the time. You just get colds. But this last year, you know, th even through the winter with the distancing and the masks and the hand washing, an entire year, of no colds, right? No colds. We got COVID, but no colds. <laughs> but we did get COVID, we did get COVID. <laughs> Made it through, thank goodness, but here's what happened. My son was going to kindergarten every fortnight <laughs> and He came home with a fever. So we freaked out and we ran to the doctor and my little son tested positive, but my husband and I tested negative. And the doctor turned to us and said, okay, can you quarantine from him? I have been wanting to do that for a very long time. Are you saying it's medically recommended? Is that what you're saying? That is medically recommended? What does that look like? I just put him in a hotel room, throw PBS on the television, keep the room service rolling and like take off for like two weeks? You know, is that, is that doctor's orders? I just want to be clear. Is that doctor's orders? But of course, you know, we couldn't do that. And so that night we were at home and I'm holding my son. He was feeling tired um, and I was fine. I was just scared. <laughs> and then I remember the moment that he sneezed into my open mouth. <laughs> and I was like, I think that's one of the ways you can get this. I. <laughs> Remember something deep on the CDC website about this? Yeah, so we got it, we made it through, but there was a moment there where I was like, you know what, my son could have killed me. And I'm never gonna let him forget it. I am never gonna let him forget it, yeah. Hopefully he grows up to be just another average crappy teenager and he'll want to do things and I'll want to restrict him and he'll be mad and maybe he'll even say, you know what, mom, I wish you were dead. And I'll go, you already tried that? <laughs> but did it work? No, it did not. So you better sit yourself back down and finish mommy's manicure. That's right. That's right. 
I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing at the best of times. I made all the mistakes. I bought, I mean, just compensating. Compensating. I bought him way too many little toys. We have a small apartment. Where are we going to put this stuff? Uh, I bought him a uh, slinky. Do you remember slinky? And then I was like, great, now we need to buy stairs. <laughs> And then when he was feeling bad or crying or super mad, I just felt terrible. Like I was a, a bad mom and I did not know what I was doing. And I actually, I even said to my therapist, I'm afraid I'm ruining him. And she said this thing that so many people say. She goes, no, 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 Fira. Little kids are so resilient, okay? Little kids are so resilient. I was like, Okay, then why am I talking to you every week about my childhood? <laughs> uh, because not one of my stories goes like this. Oh, and then when I was 10 years old, I just bounced back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, things got better and better. <laughs> oh, I don't need therapy. I just need a room to tell my stories of strength. <laughs> I mean, isn't that the whole point of therapy is that you realize that we're not resilient? Yeah. And then you go, I'll take the drugs. <laughs> like, isn't that, <laughs> that how it goes? And if you don't take the drugs, you do something else. You're like, I'm fine. And you're like, oh, I thought you were doused in CBD oil and you sleep under a weighted blanket. So, <laughs> whatever we're saying. A friend of mine just got off antidepressants and she is now microdosing. <laughs> microdosing. Do you know anything about microdosing? All right, so microdosing is when you take a, uh, a, a, a hallucinogen, like usually psilocybin, like magic mushrooms, or sometimes it's THC, like from weed, uh, and you take a very small amount of it every single day like it was a prescription. So my friend is actually microdosing LSD. <laughs> She's, Mike, she's taking a very small amount every day, and she finds that it makes her, she's in a much better mood, and, and she's better at work. When did drugs get so boring? What? What? Oh my God, better at work? No, 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 no. Acid is not supposed to make you better at your job, okay? Acid is supposed to make you lose your job. I don't want to take LSD and then be like, I love Excel spreadsheets. No. I don't want to start tripping and being like, wow, I do have a suggestion for HR, you know. Controlled drugs, that is just no fun control drugs. That's what it's about. That's why people do them. How much did I take? Was it too much? How long is this going to last? You know, that's the chaos that gives it the thrill. If I ever take LSD, I am not going to work. I would just like to say that. I would like to uh, just find myself walking down the side of a highway with half a falafel sandwich in my hand, yelling to the wind that the music industry will never produce another artist like Prince, you know? That's drugs. That's drugs. Uh, and uh, I had my moment too. I, I haven't really found a lot of white hair on my head, but I found a white hair. <laughs> uh, I was... <laughs> I was taking one of my bi-monthly showers and... <laughs> out of the corner of my eye, I saw <laughs> a white hair growing out of my nipple. <laughs> And I freaked out, I freaked out. I was like, no, no, I don't wanna deal with this. And then I was like, wait a second, I don't have to deal with this uh, because I'm gonna take a pair of tweezers and I'm gonna pluck it out and I'm gonna destroy the evidence and then we're all just gonna move on because guess what? I am not ready to be this old, okay? 
And so I got my tweezers and I was ready to do it, um, but I had to put on my reading glasses <laughs> to find it. I've never felt more sexy or vital in my entire life. I mean, I put on this outfit and I said to my husband, this looks sufficiently sexy, right? Which I understand is the least sexy combination of words. <laughs> sufficiently sexy. Like, oh, I find her reliably hot. You know, like, no. No. If you don't know how you come across, and then sometimes the world tells you. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I went into this lounge, bar lounge, uh, before a show just to write and get myself together. And I walked in, but immediately I got ushered out. This guy just came up to me and he was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this is closed for the conference. And then he looked at me and went, oh, wait a second, you're one of the organizers from the conference, right? And I just went, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, oh, well, you're a bit early, but you know what, come on in, let me get you a glass of wine because I know how hard you people work putting this all together. <laughs> And I just sat there alone in this bar with a free glass of wine. And I was like, you know, I used to get free drinks when I was like young and slutty. <laughs> and now I'm getting free drinks because I look old and overworked. <laughs> Not only am I sufficiently sexy, I am planning committee hot. Everybody, <laughs> I'm planning committee hot. That's who I am. People look at me and they're like, I'd like to see a clipboard in that lady's hands. <laughs> oh my God. I've heard she can multitask. <laughs> And then I stole a soup. <laughs> that is like the most white lady thing to say of all time. I stole a soup, but I stole a soup. I was in one of those grocery stores where you can ladle yourself out a soup. And I, was, I did it, and then I was in a daze, and I just walked out. And I hit the other side of the doors, and I was like, oh my goodness, I, how did that happen? I just walked out without paying for this. And then I remembered that they say women in their 40s are invisible to society. <laughs> and I was like, finally, I'm using this to my advantage. <laughs> Carrot ginger today, Gucci and Rolex tomorrow. Let's do this. Let's do this. And I, uh, I became, uh, last month, I became an American citizen, everybody. I know, thank you, thank you. I know it was a long, it was a long trajectory. First, uh, I got married for love and a green card <laughs> and love. And then I had a kid, anchor baby, <laughs> and And then it was time to make it happen. <laughs> and so, yeah, made it happen. And I will say, though, I was like, hey, I became an American citizen. And you know what most people have said back to me? Why? Why? <laughs> why? They were like, why? I was planning on you taking me to Canada. That's what... I'm at, what happened to USA? USA! I know what happened. <laughs> I know what happened. <laughs> It is funny watching that little trajectory because when I moved here, you know, people would just joke endlessly about Canada. Like it was just this adorable, cute little thing that they knew nothing about. They'd be like, oh my God, Canada, oh, Canada. <gasps> Sorry. <laughs> be like, it gets really cold up there, eh? It gets really cold up there, eh? <laughs> And then it changed. Then people were like, Canada? <laughs> How cold does it get up there? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, run, run me through it. Like, winter temperatures, average. <laughs> Is it hard to learn the metric system? Wow. 
I feel like Canada's slogan should be, Canada, oh, now you're interested, you know? <laughs> and I, I grew up in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Uh, I, yeah, thanks, sure. Uh, I, was, I was raised Jewish in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, or so I thought, then I moved to New York. Maybe I was raised Protestant because... <laughs> Yeah, everyone here is more Jewish than I am. Everybody. My Puerto Rican neighbor knows more about Judaism than I do. Yeah, he'll come up to me and be like, Shabbat Shalom, Ophir, and I'm like, okay, thank you. Because I have nothing more to say on this one. Uh, and I am not from a stereotypical Jewish family in the sense that we were not rich Jews. I didn't even get the good end of the stereotype. <laughs> not rich Jews. We were very working class Jews. You know, we mowed our own lawns. We painted our own houses. We fixed our own cars. Uh, there's uh, Sephardic Jews. There's Ashkenazi Jews. I'm from a very small sect called the DIY Jews. We are the <laughs> DIY Jews. We are the Jews behind the Jews, really. <laughs> Yeah. We're the heaps for hire. That's who we are, the heaps for hire. I will say this last year too, I have looked at my phone way too much. I mean, your phone now tells you that. But I have looked at my phone way too much and I get sucked into social media like nobody's business. I mean, every, Instagram, everyone's having more fun than I am. Twitter, everyone's saying funnier things than I am, but I've reached a new low because now I am scrolling through Venmo. <laughs> feeling bad about myself based on other people's banking transactions. That's Venmo FOMO, that is the lowest form of FOMO. But let me tell you something, the vaguer the description of what it is for, the more you feel left out. <laughs> because I'm just scrolling and then it's like, Sarah paid Michelle and just wrote, shenanigans. I'm like, I know Sarah and Michelle, where was I, you know? <laughs> what are even, what are shenanigans? I don't even know, they sound amazing. Like, I, I've been part of a shebang and I like cardigans, but I don't know what's a shenanigan. Sounds expensive. Sounds like dangerous mischief. I don't understand why that page is there. It serves no purpose. It's just for bragging. I have never looked at an ATM machine and thought, this needs a social aspect. You know, it really does. I need to know if anyone recently has given Michaela 40 bucks for two tacos and a rainbow. You know, I need to know. So now I live in Brooklyn and uh, yeah, I like it. Yeah, I know, lots of, lots of Brooklyn people. So, you know, neighborhood's great, however, Three months ago, there was a shooting on our street. Nobody got hurt, but here's what happened. Someone came by in the middle of the night and shot three shots in three consecutive doorways. Boom, boom, boom. And just to give you an idea of the street, if they would have kept going, the next doorway would be a yoga studio. <laughs> All right? So the yoga ladies went insane. They were like, this place has bad vibes! You know, they were mad. And then the real estate agents were like, how are we gonna sell these apartments for millions of dollars now? <laughs> and then the families were like, is this a safe place for our children? And everyone wanted to know what the shooter looked like. That's all they cared about. They were like, what does the shooter look like? What, what do we know about this guy? Was he black? Was he white? Hispanic? What, is, what do we know about this guy? What does he look like? And then news came back that the shooter was a woman. Oh. Yeah. And the conversation totally changed. <laughs> Oh yeah, everyone was like, oh, did she get him? <laughs> I 
I mean, clearly he had it coming, but did she get him? The yoga ladies were on board. They were like, we will finish the job, you know, just whipping around their mats. The real estate agents were using it as marketing. They're like, the kind of street where a woman's in charge. <laughs> Even the families were like, you know, you can stand up for yourself like that woman did. She was a hero. And the only thing they cared about how the woman shooter looked was if she looked satisfied. <laughs> And then gossip in the neighborhood circulated again and news came back that the woman shooter was a hired gun. She was hired to do the job. I know! That has got to be something that you get paid for over Venmo. Right? That's... That would be a shenanigan. I'm just saying. That would be a shenanigan. Uh, I, li I like it there, although you get, there's a little bit of judgy parenting going on that I uh, don't like. First of all, I will say this, you know, when my, my kid was very little, I was very bad at breastfeeding. I found it very hard. I walked around like topless for five months in our apartment. You'd think my husband would love that, some woman walking around topless for like five months. But I was also crying, going, I can't do this, I can't do this. <laughs> So our apartment was like the saddest strip club on the planet. It's like penthouse, the postpartum years, you know? And then I really valued sleep. So I did this uh, thing called sleep training that I got judged for. Sleep training, if you don't know what that is, that's where you close the door and you let the baby cry themselves to sleep. Because I figured he should learn how I do it. <laughs> and... Uh, and then, you know, there was, uh, there was just all the, you have one child and it's not enough. Everyone's like, when are you gonna have another child? When are you gonna have another child? No, 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 no. I know what I have to offer. Uh, I know what my resources are. I could give two kids shitty lives. <laughs> or I could give one kid a very mediocre life. Okay. And that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I mean, I'm, o I'm overwhelmed as it is. I've, I've so much to take care of. I feel, I feel like I've so much to take care of. I have to take care of my child. I have to take care of myself. I have to take care of my husband. I have, uh, I have six orchids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. If you know anything about orchids, you have to put a lot of time and effort into that plant in order to get it to bloom, right? Yeah, you can take care of it or a kid. That's why it's called an orchid. But... <laughs> That is the mom joke of dad jokes, right there. That is the mom joke of dad jokes. But uh, nobody else is doing botanical humor. I'm just gonna let you know that right now. All right. I'm the only one with plant-based jokes, so. My thing, my thing. Uh, and, you know, I just, I would always just want a break um, when he was really little to have a, a glass of wine. I love, I love sitting at a bar and having a glass of wine. It's one of my favorite things. My friends know that. So much so, actually, that when I got pregnant, it was a surprise. I mean, kind of, in the sense that <laughs> I know how it happened, you know? <laughs> Wasn't like, what? I guess when I was walking down the street and that vat of sperm fell on me, you know, it... <laughs> Surprise, yeah. I guess it was that toilet seat at the train station. <laughs> no, I, I know how it happened. Uh, it was Valentine's Day. My husband took me out for a very nice, expensive dinner, and I felt guilty. <laughs> I'm 
surprise! <laughs> so when I found out, I, uh, I, I had plans that evening to go to a party, and I was shocked, but I was still gonna go to this party, but I wasn't gonna tell anyone, and I wasn't gonna drink. So I go to this party, and my friend sees me, and she's like, Ophir, what do you want? Let me get you a drink. Glass of wine, vodka soda, what would you like? And I go, no, 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 no uh, just a water. And she goes, oh, good for you, Ophira. <laughs> it's like, thank you so much. She's like, yeah, I'm happy you came to that decision before we all had to come and talk to you about it. I was like, you jerk. I'm not an alcoholic. I'm pregnant. She was like, oh my God. Nobody thinks you should be a mother. <laughs> and then I remember this one day uh, that I was, I didn't have any help, he was a really tiny baby. I just wanted to go have a break and sit down at the neighborhood bar for a glass of wine. And I was like, what do I do? I can't do this. And I thought, yes, I can do this. We have the little baby Bjorn wrap thing. I'm just gonna wrap them in and go to the bar, you know? <laughs> Technically, not drinking alone. <laughs> and... <laughs> so I did it and I went into the bar. And people were cool. People were cool. I got a high five. Uh, I got a thumbs up, but there was one guy who was giving me like a stink eye. He was like looking at me angry that there was a baby in the bar and I felt like I had to say something to him. And I just went up to him and I was like, look, uh, he can be in here, okay? Because this is my emotional support baby, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's right. A service baby, thank you. That's right, it's a service baby. I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, if you must know from having a baby. <laughs> uh, try to, I try to chill out. I'm terrible at yoga. Man, I am bad at yoga and I hate Chardonnay. I really let down the white woman brand, but I have tried, I have tried. I've taken a million basics classes and they're, the basics classes are getting harder and harder and harder <laughs> because everyone knows yoga. Like you can't take a beginner class anymore. Everyone's speaking conversational Sanskrit. Like it's really hard. And I, so I did online over the last year and that was just a failure. I guess I learned a couple things. I learned my favorite pose is when you uh, put your arms over your head and then you lie back on your couch and just watch the class. <laughs> just watch it live. But I, I couldn't find the one for me, and then I actually did find the one for me. Uh, I've been taking prenatal yoga. I'm not pregnant, but I just lie and say I'm six weeks. Like, what are they gonna do? <laughs> and prenatal yoga, that's just snacks on a mat. That is snacks on a mat for 45 minutes. <laughs> and then five minutes of complaining, <laughs> your choice and then you just lie down for half an hour. Uh, it's not called Shavasana, that's called Nirvana. <laughs> that's fantastic. I did in person at that yoga studio on my block uh, only once and I hated it because they made people share at the beginning of the class. I hate that, I hate that thing at any time where they're like, let's go around the room. I'm like, no, 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 no. Let's never ever go around the room. I've, I've paid money to not go around the room. So we're gonna go around and everyone's gonna say what you're craving. And I was like, oh, no one's gonna do this. First woman goes, dark chocolate. And everyone claps, yes, 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 yes. I was like, oh my goodness. The next woman goes, bread. And people cried for like 20 minutes. And, and then it just kept going. It was like, cheese, ice cream, you know, focaccia, red meat. And I'm watching it come towards me and I'm panicking because I don't know what to say, because I'm not craving anything, and I just go, oh, I just have to make something up. So it comes to me, and she's like, and what are you craving? I was like, right, right, right. Um, okay, you know that thing when um, you've been doing cocaine all night, and then <laughs> the sun comes up, and you're like, oh my God, did I sign up for a yoga class? <laughs> and then 
you're in the yoga class and you're like, you know, it would take the edge off a light beer. So, <laughs> I'm craving a light beer. I'm craving a light beer. <laughs> Nobody there laughed. Nobody there laughed. I was given a, uh, a pamphlet for not so much a class, but a meeting, a nice meeting. <laughs> I've never run a marathon, I guess because I've never had a breakup that bad. And <laughs> and we're trying to reduce the meat. We're trying to reduce the meat, so we're doing Beyond Burger, Impossible Burger. They are the best. They are the best. They, Beyond Burgers taste really good. Why? Because if you notice, when you cut a Beyond Burger, it bleeds yeah. kind of like meat. And that's what makes it so tasty. And I get it. I get why they're doing that. I've known so many vegetarians and vegans over the years, and they've all said the same thing. They always go, you know, it's actually not the meat that I miss so much. It's the murder. If only, oh, if only when I bit into a mushroom, it like groaned and like splurted some blood, you know? If only I could watch an artichoke heart stop. <laughs> I'd feel cool, I'd feel cool. <laughs> so yeah, and my, uh, my husband and I, we've, we've been together for 15 years. Wow. I know, that is a thing. <laughs> and through the pandemic, which like, that's an added five, right? That's just like an added five years. Yeah, uh, he's a great guy. He is a, uh, he's a comic book nerd. He's a comic book nerd, he's a, he loves Star Wars, like just nerd, 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 nerd but very good looking. Oh. Yeah, that's a great combination, right? Low self-esteem, but attractive. Get him! And... <laughs> and, you know, over the course of last year, I was like, you need to help out some more, you know, please buy our kids some new clothes. And so he bought him some T-shirts. But he bought him this one t-shirt. You know, they love putting slogans on little kids' clothes, okay? And it's very gendered. If it's a girl, they're always about mommy and like, princess like mommy and beauty like mommy. And if it's a boy, they're about daddy. And so he bought this shirt for our son that says, tough like daddy. <laughs> I'm like, have you met daddy? <laughs> because... Overly sensitive, like daddy, that would be good. Often confused, like daddy, that's... Can't hold his liquor, like daddy. And we got in like, you know, the regular fights, I think, over the course of the last year. Very basic, stereotypical ones. Like he said to me, since I've been married to you, I have never been right. <laughs> I was like, well, you were just then. <laughs> um, And I just learned that he will not pick up after himself. You know, we used to blame it on all things. Oh, too busy, work, but then it just turns out he cannot pick up after himself. <laughs> and I have to accept this. And just remember, you know, that thing like, don't worry, every time God closes one door, my husband will leave a drawer or cupboard open. <laughs> Uh, we, uh, we actually had sex a few times during the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, a couple times you're drinking at home. I don't know my alcohol tolerance at home. I know what it is when I'm out, is when the bar closes, but... <laughs> how do you know? And, uh, he is, uh, I, he's into dirty talk. I'm not into dirty, dirty talk. I just don't relate to it. I never have because they'll be like, you're a bad bitch. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I... <laughs> Just sometimes I get angry and it's... 
frustrated. <laughs> and he was like, this is not working. What do you want to hear? And I said, compliments. <laughs> and he said, like what? <laughs> like ones that you come up with, actually. Okay? Write them up, pass them by legal, let's do this. <laughs> so then, uh, you know, we, uh, we haven't spent a lot of time apart. And then I went and did a show out of town for the very first time in a long time. And, you know, we've had this discussion a few times where he has said to me, we should try sexting because, you know, we got married before sexting, really. <laughs> and I've always said, no. <laughs> no. I mean, oh my God. I mean, I've sexed with coworkers, but you know, never him. <laughs> and... and so then I'm away and I get this text on my phone that just says, may I send you a picture? A dick pic from my own husband. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants a dick pic of the dick you know. Guaranteed. <laughs> Actually, as far as I tell, in the history of dick pics, no woman has ever requested a dick pic. It's never happened. Never, never been asked for, ever, not once. They just come at you. They just come at you like digital dodgeballs. They just enter your life like mosquitoes by a creek. Yeah, because they're not worth anything. A photo of a dick is just worth nothing. It's a photo of like any part of a woman, that's worth something, but a photo of a dick, useless, worthless, can't even trade it for a penny. You can get it too often, you can get it too readily, you want it or not want it, real or fake, you just get it. All, an empty commodity, I believe they call it. It's an empty commodity. And then I'd have to like also show him that I got it. You know, because he would want to see that. I'd have to be like, and that would take a lot of acting. And I'd have to be like, oh my God, wow. Oh, sorry. There we go. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, the bathroom looks clean. I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm sort of together most of the time, but I also fall apart. So this is a little story about falling apart. Uh, I get nosebleeds all the time. My entire life, it's just weather changes, I get nosebleeds. And uh, not so long ago, I am getting ready to leave and do things, and I look at, I'm just getting ready, and I get a nosebleed. I'm like, oh my goodness, no, no, no. And so I stopped it, looked at myself in the mirror, I was like, okay, we're good to go. And then I ran out the door, and I'm running to the subway, and it's hot, so I'm sweating, and I'm just wiping sweat off my face, and I did not realize that I kind of snorted out a globule of blood. <laughs> And thinking it was sweat, I just wiped it across my face and entered New York City. I got on a pretty packed subway from Brooklyn to Manhattan. I went to a bank to do with a check issue. I went to a Walgreens and picked up some lotion. And then I got up on another packed subway car back to Brooklyn. I bought myself a coffee and a, a greeting card. Okay. Nobody said anything. Nobody said anything. I had no idea what was going on. I don't even remember anyone looking at me weird. What I do remember is that people were looking at me, not weird, but just for an extra second. You're like, you know when strangers just pause on your face for like an extra beat and you can't figure out why? But a little tiny part of me was like, maybe I look really good today. Like maybe. I've got something going on, you know. That's, 
attracting everyone, and I gotta tell you, it put a spring in my step. I felt confident, I felt bold. When I bought my coffee, I experimented with conversation. I was like, how are you? <laughs> and, So then when I came home, I was like, I gotta see what I have going on. Cause it's getting such a positive reaction. And I just ran into my apartment and ran over to my, my bathroom and just looked in the mirror and I was like, oh my God. Because I had this dried blood on my face and it was in an arc from my nostril going up my cheekbone. Oh, just, and a lot of blood, like a lot of blood and like a little bit of a gobule of something. I mean, just so embarrassing. And I'm washing off my face and I just feel so stupid and ashamed. Oh, you're really good looking. <laughs> you know, just so dumb. <laughs> and mad, I was mad. I was like, couldn't anyone have said anything? Like just do a little motion on the face or just whisper anything? No one said anything? What is wrong with people? How disjointed are we from each other? And then my brain did a little turn and I was like, or is it that everyone is pretty cool and really non-judgmental? <laughs> you know? Was it actually the case that, I don't know, 300 people, strangers, looked at me that day and just went, I don't know what the heck's going on with that lady. Maybe this is the best day she's had in years. Okay, maybe today she got most of the blood off of her face. Got on some pants and made it out of the house, all right? Give her a coffee and let little blood face live her life. You guys were stupendous. Thank you so much.